Welcome to the Conscious Builder channel. And on today's video, we're sharing four critical items that are important to building in a floodplain and getting your building permit approved. We'll also share why thinking this way for all future builds may be a good idea. I'm Casey Gray, the founder of The Conscious Builder, and on this channel, we help you build and live more consciously. If you're new here, go ahead and click that subscribe button, and don't forget to check out the links in the description below. We recently went through this process in building a three bedroom cottage on the Ottawa River. The owners had the design completed before they reached out to us, but the plan was to tear down the aged beyond repair cottage and build a new cottage in its place. A big portion of the permitting and planning process in a project like this is guided by the 100 year floodplain. This photo was from 2019 and you can see the original cottage and neighboring property submerged in one to two meters of water. This area unfortunately also suffered a similar flood just two years earlier. Climate resiliency and preparing for events such as floods is becoming increasingly more important as we deal with the ever changing and unpredictable environment. Just last fall, British Columbia was in a state of emergency for over a month as 15,000 people were forced from their homes. The series of atmospheric rivers smashed rainfall records, causing rivers and streams to overflow, washing away roads, bridges, and railways, and flooding farms in up to two meters of water. Unfortunately, stories like this are becoming more and more common. So here are four key design details that you need to consider when building in a floodplain. So number one is the minimum elevation. Your local conservation authority will set the required elevations for your project. For example, the MVCA, which stands for the Mississippi Valley Conservation Authority, here states that the flood level in this area is 60.8 meters above sea level, and they want the living space floor assembly to be 61.4 meters. So that means that we need to be 1.4 meters above that floodplain with the main floor of the cottage. Number two is the fill apron, and this is the grading around the perimeter of the home. In this area, the top of the fill apron can be a maximum of 0.15 meters above the flood elevation, and it can extend from the foundation one meter to 4.5 meters, and then it can taper down a maximum of three to one to the existing grade. And that three to one grade is three meters high for every one meter out. Number three would be the drainage swales. Here it states that changes in grade must not result in drainage being directed onto neighboring properties. Now this particular one is not uncommon for any property. Obviously you can't have a grading plan that's gonna drive all the water to your neighboring properties. However, it makes it especially tricky when you're dealing with a smaller lot and having to build the home up significantly higher than where it was before. Number four would be the septic. The bottom of the septic system cannot be lower than that 100 year floodplain. So once again, this is not something that's necessarily uncommon because if you do have groundwater on a lot, your septic does have to be higher than that. But what happens in this case is that we're not dealing with groundwater, we're dealing with a floodplain that could actually be taller or higher, I should say, than the original grading of the lot. So that means that you're going to have what looks like a whale buried in the yard somewhere, which is your septic system. So once again, it's just something to consider because it makes all of the planning for your landscaping and grading that much more difficult. One other thing we had to deal with specifically for this property, not only because it was in a floodplain, but because it was on the water, was the erosion protection. So there was already a big retaining wall on the property, but it was falling apart. So we replaced that with riprap, so big stones that would prevent the ground from washing into the river if there was a flood. So essentially it's a big wall that's holding the grade back to where the cottage is sitting now. Obviously there is a lot more to building in a floodplain than just these four or five points that I've just mentioned, but these are big significant ones that will affect the overall design and the cost of your project. And floodplain or not, I think building without a basement is a good idea because basements have to be treated differently. Plus there's always the risk of flooding or leaks unless maybe you're up on a hill and you have perfect grading. 
If this was helpful, be sure to click that subscribe button. And if you want to dig deeper into the basement comment I just made, no pun intended, you can watch this video here on why basements are a bad idea. As a leader or business owner, you need to be prepared to handle any kind of conversation effectively, especially the tough talks or the less than ideal situations. Stress, confusion, conflict, these are all huge drains on your energy and your time. And this trickles into every aspect of your life and your business. Ultimately, this ends up affecting your health, it affects your relationships, and then within your business, it's going to affect your bottom line. And that is why I've created two new resources for you here at the Conscious Builder Academy. One is called the Conflict Resolution Toolkit, and the second is called Priming for Tough Conversations. Now, my wife, Natasha, is a former psychotherapist, and when she was going through school, I had just started my business. And I remember, I specifically remember telling her that I don't need to know any of the psychology stuff. That's crazy. It doesn't matter to me <laughs> how little I knew at the time. Now, that is 90% of what I do in my business. So together, we teamed up and we created these PDF handbooks to help you master these tough conversations and to resolve this conflict between your team members and to ultimately keep your projects moving towards the goals that you want to achieve. Now you can get each one of these handbooks individually if one is more interesting to you than the other, or you can get them both together as a package and get an even better deal than just buying them individually. So it's a ton of value. Highly recommend you check it out. The link is in the description below, or you can head to ConsciousBuilderAcademy.com. Until next time, I'm Casey Gray, and remember to live consciously.